Today, the appetizer is cooked at the Kiowa Island Club by executive chef Frank Caputo. It features Gulf seafood, shrimp and crawfish in puff pastry. The entree is done by Corey Schreiber in Portland, Oregon. The centerpiece is local quail, browned on top of the stove, then roasted and served with wilted spinach. Finally, from Barrington, Illinois, Chef Richard Rivera creates what he calls an opera tort. It contains chocolate mousse, coffee buttercream, and chocolate sponge cake. Both of Frank Caputo's parents were born in southern Italy and instilled a love for that lusty cuisine and great wine in their son. After an associate degree at the CIA, he worked in five restaurants in five years. Not unusual for a young chef. Here is bouchy of shrimp and crawfish. The bouchy will be fashioned out of discs cut from a sheet of puff pastry. The bouchy is lightly egg washed and will be refrigerated for 15 minutes before baking. The pastry is baked with a homemade rack arrangement. This rack here helps it raise evenly. Bake at 450 degrees for eight to 10 minutes. And when we bake it. The dish includes poached white asparagus and morel mushrooms. Morels, you need to trim the stem. Um, the, these morels are actually the very, very first of the season. They're uh, from uh, California. And um, they don't have that quite woodsy. Um, hugely morel flavor that they would have um, as spring goes on. Um, so they're, they're a good quality, but once again, they're the first of the season. We're just going to wash them twice to remove any sand, dirt, and uh, there aren't any, um, or we're hoping that there aren't any little critters in there just yet. We're just going to lightly poach the uh, asparagus, three to four minutes. We're poaching this in the, um, in a fish stock uh, flavored with the, cra the shells from the crayfish. Crayfish thyme, and with the addition of, from the poaching of the asparagus and the poaching of the morels, we're gonna induce all these flavors right into the ditch, um, and pulling them all together. Once your asparagus are done, you remove them. You add a slight touch of the wine that you're going to feature in the dish. Allow the liquid to come back to a boil. And then poach your morels. They take approximately around the same time as the asparagus do to cook. The chef now prepares the seafood. Shallots are softened in butter.
our shrimp. Our shrimp takes slightly longer to cook, so we start them before the crayfish. Add our crayfish. We're going to deglaze the pan with a liquid called verjus, which means a green grape juice, to give it a little bit of acid. Let that reduce slightly. Once our seafood is fully cooked, we'll remove it. Add our Montreché. Let it reduce slightly and add some of our poaching liquid that we poached the morels and the asparagus in. Let this further reduce. Meanwhile, the top of the bottom layer is removed from the finished bushi. Once our sauce is ready, we add our seafood, our morels, and asparagus, just to warm them through. Season with a little salt and white pepper. Fill the boucher. The sauce is finished. Add our cream. Let it reduce slightly. Shareable completes presentation. Wildwood Restaurant in Portland features the No Frills American renditions of Corey Schreiber. He has impressive credits, having worked with Lydia Shire in Boston, 
Gordon Sinclair in Chicago, and Bradley Ogden in the San Francisco area. His entree is Columbia River Farm quail with cider. What I have here for the uh, Columbia River Farms quail, which is a locally grown quail, going with a uh, cider brown butter and uh, sage. The first step in this dish is to uh, reduce uh, cider. This is a, a hard cider here, or you can just use a regular uh, apple cider out of a, out of a jar. Got about a cup of cider that's gonna come down to about two tablespoons. It's reduced to a glaze. You'll notice the color darkens a little bit as it goes down and the sugar concentrates. Tuck the wings back on the quail a little bit. Season it with some salt and pepper. Have a small saute pan over here with just about a tablespoon of olive oil in it. I'm going to brown the uh, breast side first and then flip it back over on this side to finish roasting it in the oven. Got a Granny Smith apple. I'm going to cut into some small matchstick pieces as a garniture. The grease is poured off and the pan is put into a 350 degree oven for 12 to 15 minutes. In one pan, the chef begins the sauce with melted butter. In the other pan, spinach will be wilted. I'm going to start that out at high heat until it starts to melt and then temper it from there. Also, as the garniture on this dish, I have a little bit of uh, spinach. The apple matchsticks are added. The butter's, the butter's starting to brown a little bit. I've added the apples just to cook them slightly, but you still want to keep some of the firmness in the apple. A few sage leaves. Little lemon juice. The cider is what's going to pull all this together. I'm going to get my spinnies going. This is the reduced cider. butter over the top and some sweet potato chips as a garniture.
In an ordinary shopping mall in Barrington, outside of Chicago, is the extraordinary Ambrosia Euro Patisserie. It features the stellar pastry of Richard Rivera. He worked as executive pastry chef at large hotels for a decade before opening Ambrosia. His dessert is an opera tort. The wet ingredients for the almond sponge cake include sweetened egg whites, beaten to stiff peaks. Also, whole eggs, beaten with sugar until pale. Now the dry ingredients. That would be the flour, the baking powder, and the ground almonds. Which can be either ground in a coffee mill or a food processor. introduce half of the meringue into the egg and sugar mixture and fold gently. Try to maintain the volume. Over mixing will condense your mixture. After the rest of the meringue is added, the dry ingredients go in. Incorporate completely and deposit onto the sheet pan. This will yield two thin layers. Parchment paper lines the sheet pan and vegetable spray grease the sides. Bake at 400 degrees for 7 to 10 minutes. The composition of the tort includes layers comprised of coffee buttercream, which is buttercream mixed with strong coffee or espresso. Another filling is called chocolate Bavarian, a mousse, fortified with anglaise and gelatin. Finally, ganache, chocolate melted in heavy cream. In all, there are four sponge layers. Each one is painted with a rum-flavored syrup. The first layer is covered with coffee buttercream. And alternate your fillings, which is the coffee buttercream, a chocolate Bavarian, and a chocolate ganache. Followed by the chocolate Bavarian. By using a bag with a flat tip, it keeps your construction very clean. Apply a little pressure for a good bonding. Thin layer of ganache. We be followed by one more layer of mocha buttercream.
Top it off with the buttercream to seal the porous sponge and you'll be ready for the final garnish, which is a layer of chocolate ganache. Apply a thin layer of chocolate ganache to your composition of opera cake, and this is your finished product. Very sleek, very clean, very flavorful. Thank you.